MISL generally refers to the sovereign states of the Sikh Confederacy, that rose during the 18th century in the Punjab region of the Indian subcontinent after the collapse of the Mughal Empire. The missiles formed a commonwealth that was described by Antoine Pollier as an aristocratic republic. Although the missiles were unequal in strength, and each MISL attempted to expand its territory and access to resources at the expense of others, they acted in unison in relation to other states. The missiles held biannual meetings of their legislature, the Sarbat Khalsa in Amritsar. History In order to withstand the persecution of Shah Jahan and other Mughal rulers, several of the later Sikh gurus established military forces and fought the Mughal Empire and Hindu hill chiefs in the early and middle Mughal Sikh wars. Banda Singh Bahadur continued Sikh resistance to the Mughal Empire until his defeat at the Battle of Gurdas Nangal. For several years Sikhs found refuge in the jungles and the Himalayan foothills until they organized themselves into military bands known as Jathas. List of missiles Military Each MISL was made up of members of soldiers, whose loyalty was given to the missile's leader. A MISL could be composed of a few hundred to tens of thousands soldiers. Any soldier was free to join whichever MISL he wished, and was free to cancel his membership of the MISL to whom he belonged. He could, if he wanted, cancel his membership of his old MISL and join another. The barons would allow their armies to combine or coordinate their defenses together against a hostile force if ordered by the Miseldar Supreme Commander. These orders were only issued in military matters affecting the whole Sikh community. These orders would normally be related to defense against external threats, such as Afghan military attacks. The profits of a fighting action were divided by the missiles to individuals based on the service rendered after the conflict using the Sardari system. The Sikh Confederacy is a description of the political structure, of how all the barons' kingdoms interacted with each other politically together in Punjab. Although missiles varied in strength, the use of primarily light cavalry with a smaller amount heavy cavalry was uniform throughout all of the Sikh missiles. Cavalrymen in a MISL were required to supply their own horses and equipment. A standard cavalryman was armed with a spear, matchlock, and scimitar. How the armies of the Sikh missiles received payment varied with the leadership of each MISL. The most prevalent system of payment was the Fasilandari system. Soldiers would receive payment every six months at the end of a harvest. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Cavalry tactics. Fauja Singh considers the Sikh missiles to be guerrilla armies, although he notes that the Sikh missiles generally had greater numbers and a larger number of artillery pieces than a guerrilla army would. The missiles were primarily cavalry-based armies and employed less artillery than Mughal or Maratha armies. The missiles adapted their tactics to their strength in cavalry and weakness in artillery and avoided pitched battles. Missiles organized their armies around bodies of horsemen and their units fought battles in a series of skirmishes, a tactic which gave them an advantage over fighting pitched battles. Bodies of cavalry would attack a position, retreat, reload their muskets, and return to attack it again. The tactics used by MISL field armies include flanking an enemy, obstructing river passages, cutting off a unit from its supplies, intercepting messengers, attacking isolated units like foraging parties, employing hit-and-run tactics, overrunning camps, and attacking baggage trains. To fight large armies the MISL would completely evacuate the areas in front of the enemy's marching route but follow in the rear of the opposition and reconquer areas the enemy had just captured, threaten agents of the enemy with retribution, and sweep over the countryside in the wake of the enemy's withdrawal. The running skirmish was a tactic unique to the Sikh cavalrymen which was notable for its effectiveness and the high degree of skill required to execute it. George Thomas and George Forster, contemporary writers who witnessed it described its use separately in their accounts of the military of the Sikhs. George Forster noted, 
a party from 40 to 50, advance in a quick pace to a distance of carbine shot from the enemy and then, that the fire may be given with the greatest certainty, the horses are drawn up and their pieces discharged, when speedily, retiring about a 100 paces, they load and repeat the same mode of annoying the enemy. Their horses have been so expertly trained to a performance of this operation that on receiving a stroke of hand, they stop from a full canter. Administration The Sikh missiles had four different classes of administrative divisions. The Patadari, Misildari, Tabadari, and Jagardari were the different systems of land tenure used by the missiles, and land granted by the MISL left the responsibility of establishing law and order to the owner of the land. The land under the direct administration of the chief of the MISL was known as the Sardari and the Tabadari and Jagardari systems used land directly given by the chief from the Sardari. The Patadari and Misildari systems formed the basis of a MISL, while Tabadari and Jagardari lands would only be created after large acquisitions of land. The type of system that was used in an area depended on the importance of the chief Sardar of the area to the rest of the MISL. The Patadari system affected newly annexed territories and was the original method used by the missiles in administrating land. The Patadari system relied on the cooperation of Sirkundas, the rank of a leader of a small party of cavalrymen. The chief of the MISL would take his, her portion and divide the other parcels among his Sardars proportional to the number of cavalrymen they had contributed to the MISL. The Sardars would then divide their parcels among their Sirkundas, and then the Sirkundas subdivided the land they received among their individual cavalrymen. The Sirkundas receiving parcels of land with settlements were required to fortify them and establish fines and laws for their zamindars and rios. Parcels of land in the Patadari system could not be sold, but could be given to relatives in an inheritance. The soldiers who received parcels from the Patadari system held their land in complete freedom. The Misildari system applied to Sardars with a small number of cavalrymen as well as independent bodies of cavalrymen who voluntarily attached themselves to a MISL. They kept the lands they held before joining the MISL as an allotment for their cooperation with the MISL. The leaders of these groups, called Misildars, could transfer their allegiance and land to another MISL without punishment. The Tabadari system referred to land under the control of a missile's Tabadars. Tabadars served a similar function to retainers in Europe. They were required to serve as cavalrymen to the MISL and were subservient to the missile's leader. Although Tabadars received their land as a reward, their ownership was subject entirely on the missile's leader. The Tabadari grants were only hereditary on the choice of the chief of the MISL. The Jagardari system used the grant of Jaggers by the chief of the MISL. Jaggers were given by the chief of the MISL to relations, dependents, and people who deserved well. The owners of Jaggers were subservient to the chief of the MISL as their ownership was subject to her needs. Like the Tabadars, Jaggerders were subject to personal service when the chief of the MISL requested. However, because jaggers entailed more land and profit, they were required to use the money generated by their jaggers to equip and mount a quota of cavalrymen depending on the size of their jagger. Jaggardari grants were hereditary in practice but a missile's chief could revoke the rights of the heir. Upon the death of the owner of a tabadari or jagadari grant, the land would revert to direct control of the chief sardari. Territory The two main divisions in territory between the missiles were between those who were in the Malwa region and those who were in the Maja region. While eleven of the missiles were north of the Sutlej River, one, the Fulkian MISL was south of the Sutlej. The Sikhs north of the Sutlej River were known as the Maja Sikhs while the Sikhs that lived south of the Sutlej River were known as the Malwa Sikhs. In the smaller territories were the Donibeb Singhs in the Sindh Sagar Dobe, the Gurat Singhs in the Jek Dobe, the Darpi Singhs in the Rechna Dobe, and the Doba Singhs in the Jalandar Dobe. <laughs> Sikh women in state affairs Battles fought by Sikhs Battle of Rohila Battle of Kartarpur Battle of Amritsar 1634 Battle of Lahira 
Battle of Bongani Battle of Nadan Battle of Basoli First Battle of Anandpur Battle of Nirmogar 1702 Second Battle of Anandpur Second Battle of Chamkor 1704 Battle of Muktsar Battle of Sonipat Battle of Ambala Battle of Samana Battle of Chapurchiri Battle of Sadora Battle of Ron 1710 Battle of Logar Battle of Jammu Kapuri expedition Battle of Jalalabad 1710 Siege of Gurdaspur or Battle of Gurdas Nangal Siege of Ram Rani Skirmish of Gohalwar Battle of Lahore 1759 Battle of Sialkot 1761 Battle of Gujranwala 1761 Sikh occupation of Lahore Sikh Holocaust of 1762 or Battle of Cup Battle of Harnalgar Skirmish of Amritsar 1762 Battle of Sialkot 1763 Battle of Sirhind 1764 Rescue of Hindu girls 1769 Sikh occupation of Delhi 1783 Battle of Amritsar 1797 Gurkha Sikh war Battle of Atak Battle of Multan Battle of Shapian Battle of Peshawar 1834 Battle of Jamrud Sino-Sikh War Battle of Mudka Battle of Ferozesha Battle of Badol Battle of Aliwal Battle of Sobrayan Battle of Chilianwala Battle of Ramnagar Siege of Multan Battle of Gurat Topic Bibliography Topic See also Equals equals notes <laughs>